Tuz Biber FM. Hello, can I see your passports, please? Another session of Passport Comedy Podcast. That's right. Welcome to Passport Comedy Podcast, the only podcast about international comedy broadcasting from Istanbul, Turkey. Yeah, Tuz Biber FM Studios. That's right. It's uh, it's like the Joe Rogan experience, but better. Um, <laughs> how better? How better? It's yeah. I mean, because I think Joe Rogan, uh, like, I don't have to pay rent for this, so he, he does it in yeah, his garage. Well. I go to the office. We are not jacked up on stereos. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We are not angry yeah. to much, each other. We're much weaker than Joe Rogan. That's yeah, the problem. Physically, yes. Uh, yes, physically. And mentally. Mentally. And mentally. Very mentally. <laughs> mentally. Yeah. I don't know any facts about chimpanzees or DMT. That's. <laughs> This podcast has already taken such a weird turn. Yeah. I did not expect us in the first two minutes discussing who, which one of us can take Joe Rogan like, physically. None of us can, the four of us together could stand a chance. Yeah. If we, like, first time if we, we are jumping. discussing this, Igor. Exactly. Uh, and that's why I'm as an expert guest yes, on, on exactly. beating up Joe Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> so my name is Leon Sandler, and I'm here with my co-host. I am Murat Gencholo. Nice to meet you all. And... You have, we have all the you. way from Croatia. Igor Croatia, Manda. yeah. Wow. Uh, and my name's Enes. Excellent. Enes, the, what, boss of Tuesday Bear? No, actually, I'm just a guest it. today. You're just a guest <laughs> at my own office. It gets, yeah. yeah, ignore but, that thing I just said. Yeah. So we're <laughs> we're going to cut that out. Yeah, cut that but out. Yeah, it's a proper introduction, I think. Uh, Enes is the founder of Tuesday Bear Stand-Up and all things related to it. And I'm the founder of Leon as well. So. Yeah, exactly. This is like <laughs> I'm his mother. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, very right. <laughs> this is the sperm donor that created me. Um, you know, many I, I years see ago. the resemblance. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very yeah, exactly the same kind of forlorn look in the eyes that <laughs> that um, really does it. So Igor, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I'm, I'm not your father. Yeah. Do you have any ties with incest? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just exactly. like those those yeah. two. Entirely possible. Um, so, uh, Igor, could you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and um, what you've been doing and uh, how you're visiting Istanbul? Uh, yep. So, a comedian, kind of semi-professional, I guess. Been doing it for eight years. Uh, already more than eight years. It was my wow. eighth year anniversary like 10 days ago or something. Um, so, yeah, performing in English, mostly. I've tried Croatian like twice, but didn't really like it. So yeah, been doing it for what, like nine years in Moscow, used to live in Moscow, run a few comedy organizations, English comedy club as well for a while. But uh, recently uh, things happened. So I left Moscow, uh, went back to Croatia and now I'm like traveling around performing and did the same in Istanbul. Like I saw that you guys are running uh, English comedy here and I was like, well, I gotta check it out. I can tell that you are doing this for over five years because the comedians who does this for over five years has the special things in their eyes. They lost all their hope <laughs> of making a lot of money out of this. I've <laughs> never had any hope. <laughs> you but never had hope? It's, yeah. it's nice to do, you know, like I've been doing it for so long that it's not nice to get something out of it like not to do it completely for free. But I also don't, you know, at this point, it's much more interesting for me to just perform than to yeah. like, make money off of that. I have a day job, so that earns me money, which is quite decent, so I don't have to worry about that, and I can travel and perform. I like the way he said he's like a sort of a uh, semi-professional comedian after eight years. Yeah. I've met many people here that, that <laughs> yeah. they do like comedy for a year and they're like, I'm a comedian, I'm a fucking comedian. I make everyone laugh. And I yeah. well, I need to earn real money. Of the, what the fuck? You're not going into this for money, I think right? semantics of MCs doesn't help much too. They announce the acts on stage telling them, hey, this is the next comedian. And they get this attitude. Yeah, yes, but yeah, you can be a comedian. Yeah, you're, you're a comedian only on that stage. But when you're a podcast, I like the way he said right. that. I'm a kind of, I believe you're more professional than most comedians. Exactly, because you kind around. of admit it. You're like, I'm semi-professional, you know. I'm no Joe Rogan, but, yeah. you know. And, and I'm not your father either. Exactly, yeah. exactly. exactly. Two but I, then again, I don't bald, know. <laughs> you know, strong, roided up men. Um, <laughs> right. I, I like how uh, there was one comedian who said, like, being a comedian is the only job where you are only a comedian if you're doing it well. 
Yeah. Otherwise, you're just a guy with a microphone. Yeah, exactly. That's why when you yeah, announce yeah. every performer as a comedian, they get an idea that they're actually a comedian, even though they're just saying yeah. shit that's not funny sometimes. The bar we, we can be that. pretty low if we just say, say things into a microphone for some period of time. Yeah. And then if nobody laughs, you're just like, well, that crowd didn't get my vibe. That's the thing is that these people are just a bad crowd. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, you go, oh, go ahead. Can I ask the follow-up question? You sure. said you started eight years ago, and did you start doing comedy in English directly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was, I mean, uh, when I was in Croatia, like, 10 years ago, there was no real stand-up. Like, there were some open mics here and there in the capital, but I didn't live in the capital. I studied and lived in a different city, and there was nothing there. Like, no stand-up, no open mics, no nothing, like, 10 years ago. Uh, so I never got to try it, even though like I always watched stand up and enjoyed stand up, and I was like admiring how great it must be to come up with jokes and to tell them, and people laugh and stuff. Then I went to Moscow and I checked it out, and there was some early, early days of Russian stand up. So also like just some random open mics here and there, nothing really well organized or nothing made any sense. It was just people kind of in random bars, whatever. And I couldn't speak or understand Russian at that point. So I was like, okay, I tried, I checked it out, <laughs> nothing. Yeah. So, and then like two years in, I think there was a, there was a show of Dar O'Brien uh, that I went to see. Uh, and I was like, well, this is amazing. Like when you see it, when you watch it on Netflix and stuff, you're like, okay, it's all edited and produced and whatever. But then you go to a live show and you see how someone crowd works. And what happened was- That's the best it, thing. Yeah. Actually, like uh, he released, I think three specials before that or something, three or four specials, but they were never obviously released in Russia. But all the people knew his jokes because they like pirated the specials <laughs> and like dubbed them into Russian and whatever. Mm -hmm. So he started doing those jokes and people were like, we know those jokes. And he was like, how the fuck do you know these jokes? You know, like I've never been here and I never released. They're like, we found it on the internet. <laughs> and then he did like two yeah. parts of 45 minutes just improvising yeah. and crowd that, work. That's, and stuff. that's the Russian experience is having your work exactly. pirated and stolen yeah, from that's you. That's like the Putin experience, arrive. right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moving, in on your, moving in on your set and seizing it as their own. Right, um, and <laughs> saying, saying it has always it has always been part of us, and we've yeah we exactly. Well, when is he coming back to Moscow? Who? Dar O'Brien. Uh, I don't know. He was there. I don't think anytime soon. Yes. But he was there. Like first time I saw him was two thousand and. 13 mm. and he was there also like three years ago i saw him again mm. uh but yeah i just like i i saw it i wanted to do it there was no chance to do it and then uh on my friend's facebook it popped up like someone was interested in an event because it used to show you what people are attending and stuff uh and it said like english open mic and i was like what mm. there is a stand-up open mic in moscow so mm. i went to see it a couple of times liked it and then without telling anyone, like my friends or anyone, I just went <laughs> there once to try it. I was like, okay, if I fail, there is not, not going to be anyone to see me. But I didn't. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the community was really nice, supportive. Like every, everyone was just on their kind of early days because it just started. Uh, and it was really, you know, like a, you kind of do something. I don't know, was yeah. it the same for you guys when you started doing it? But you do something and you feel like, Ah, this is what I was supposed to be doing all yeah. this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This so, is like this is that that skill I actually have. It was a similar experience for me when I started in Turkey. We didn't have a lot of experienced comedians around us. Exactly. That's all... what I was gonna say. It's like a very similar experience. The one you said with yeah. Russia and Croatia, like ten years ago, roughly. Yeah, we yeah. only had like little, of, little bit of like an open mic there. Three months later, an open mic somewhere else. He was one of the hosts of an open mic. I was doing an open mic somewhere else. So we met in that sense. So it was only like three yeah. or four. Now, the way it became, there's like big Russian comedians that come to Turkey and perform now. That's how big they yeah, made it. We have it Russian open mics in Istanbul. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> All you need is a refugee crisis within your country and lots of people will come over. You <laughs> yeah, know. A lot, a lot uh, of good performers yeah, yeah, trying yeah, to very, find very stage good. time. Yeah. Yeah, every cloud is a silver lining. They're running system. away from the war <laughs> to become. Exactly. They're, uh, they're here in Turkey for the freedom of speech, which is just amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's cheaper here. It's cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Igor, what was that like as a Croatian? And it sounds like you started doing stand-up in Moscow, right? Yep, yep. So what was that like as a foreigner who didn't really know Russian uh, and doing uh, stand-up in English for a Russian English-speaking audience? Russians, as we know, the funniest people. Are they? Um, yeah, absolutely. Oh. It's, yeah. Uh, well, it was <laughs> early days. It was mostly kind of the comics were uh, either expats 
or like Russians who've been abroad, who traveled, lived abroad and this kind of stuff. And the topics were, you know, the the kind of standard, oh, back uh, home we do this, but here in Russia they do that. This kind of like mm -hmm. comparisons, uh, culture shock and whatever. And the audience was mostly like 21-year-old girls who could barely understand English because <laughs> that was like 10 years ago in Moscow. Uh, it was really popular to go and see some foreigners. Now they're all 31 years old. Yeah. Yes. And nothing else changed. That's the only thing that changed. Yeah, they still don't know English, <laughs> any of them. Um. Yeah, and they, <laughs> but they don't go to foreign events anymore because there aren't any. Yeah. But yeah, that was the audience. So it was really, yeah. sometimes it was really hard to get anyone to laugh because even if you write a good joke, no one really kind of gets it. And then those easy <laughs> jokes were like the, you know, oh, I went to the supermarket and I didn't understand what the woman told me. Ooh, I'm so silly. <laughs> kind of stuff. It's weird that you learn how to write jokes, but the audience doesn't learn how to laugh. <laughs> it's, uh, They're behind you. It's like, like until I, because I think uh, I did my first show abroad, like outside of Russia in 2016. So two years after I started doing stand-up, uh, I organized like a small tour around the Balkans, like Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, uh, in English with, with some other people from, from our like organization. And it was a real test because I was like, okay, now I can do real jokes. <laughs> because so often, like I would do a joke in Moscow that is like, I have one joke uh, and the premise of the joke is you have to know the phrase, you can't polish a third. Right, you have to know this phrase, otherwise you don't get the joke, right? No. <laughs> so I would like start doing this joke, do the joke and see like, I don't know, out of 50 people, two people go, aha, and 48 people go, I don't get it because I don't understand yeah. what you mean. Well, they don't care for the Polish either, so it's fine. Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah so I, I would have to literally ask people like, okay, before I do this joke, raise your hand if you know the phrase. Yeah, you can't I love that. I love it when you have to check the English level of the audience before you attempt to do material. That's that's really how I know my career is on the move. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's 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 how it was, and then I went, when I went abroad and did it for some like other audiences that maybe spoke better English or maybe had a better grasp on kind of idioms and this you know like this level advanced level of English, and I was like, okay, these jokes are good. It's just like th those people don't understand them, uh, and then vice versa. Like some jokes I obviously couldn't take with me because they were so kind of localized to cater to those people. Uh, so yeah, like first few years, quite tough, this kind of gap between what we wanted to do and tried to do and what audience allowed us to yeah, do. So you weren't like censored or something. It was, we were censored by the A1, A2 English level of your own audience. Mostly. That's what censored mostly. you in Russia. But it was all <laughs> Putin's fault because yeah. they could have had a better education. Exactly. And learned English. My parents always say that the only people who understand the English we learned in school, learned it in school with us. Um, so yeah, and now that you've been out of Russia for unspecified events, um, <laughs> what, what, is, uh, what has that been like? I mean, traveling here to Istanbul, going around different countries and, and performing your material after eight years and uh, going international with it. Um, uh, it it's, it's great because like doing, doing it for so long there and it got better. Like those were just the first two, three years that it was like that. Then it got better Then especially like closer to the World Cup in Russia, 2018, people did learn English. There were a lot of foreigners, expats more and more uh, before COVID started and then people like left again and so on. So it did get better. And then when I started traveling and performing, so after that like first kind of Balkans tour, I did like three more European tours. Uh, and I realized that the good thing is when you write jokes that kind of fit everyone. So it's not just, you know, like, because uh, if I go to Croatian stand-up, it's Croatian jokes for Croatian people. Yeah. Like, you, you can translate into English, but they won't make sense. And they definitely won't make sense to, like, a Scottish person or, like, an Indonesian person. But the jokes that we did were, like, jokes in English to English-speaking people with a specific mindset of, like, traveling, living abroad, this and that. And it works, like, everywhere. Yeah. And now, like, with this eight years behind me and when I travel and perform, I know I have a set. It doesn't mean if it doesn't matter if it's like 10 minutes or 60 minutes that I'm sure it's going to kind of resonate with those people anywhere. Yeah, yeah. it's good when you can kind of delocalize your set and, and have something that you can take with you anywhere and it'll work relatively well. It might work better for certain audiences than others, as you said, but like it's not all jokes about, as you said, like, oh, you know, here in Russia, it's like this and in America, it's like that. And yeah. That'll only work like you can't take that out with you anywhere. Um, definitely. 
Uh, yeah, you traveled around, you did a lot of shows, and uh, can you tell us what is the best audience out there? Who are they? The best? Or, I don't know. I'm, I'm still trying to find them. Dagestan, um, <laughs> you know, the, the 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 Russian Republic that creates all the MMA guys. Those are they love to laugh. Good sense of humor. Great yeah, sense of they humor. They love to laugh. But, uh, especially Chechnians? especially Chechnians, the, the yeah. banter. They like when you yeah. when you tease them and insult them. Yeah, exactly. And then really... you say you do jokes about Islam, and then they take you into the forest, and you don't come out of it uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's hilarious in it's, the forest. Right? Yeah, it's hilarious in there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if if you make a joke in the forest and nobody laughs did you even make a joke yeah. was that about fo tree falling Shrouding down tree falling. Yeah. Schrodinger's, yeah. Schrodinger's yeah. joke Schrodinger's yeah. joke people did they laugh if no one could hear it yeah. um, <laughs> but, uh, if I didn't make a TikTok reel or an Instagram reel out of it it's, it's going it somewhere happen. strange these these days comedy I see a lot of people doing comedy like I saw a guy with Stephen Hawking voice doing stand up comedy I mean he, he recorded himself beforehand just played the recording and just Moved his hands on stage. Well, that guy had a, a disability that prevents him from speaking. He didn't just get weird yeah, with it. it, it, it it's, not, it's not a gimmick yeah. that uh, he just yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow, this is a really pro creative performing art piece. No, like the person has a physical disability. But it turns into a creative performance art piece because uh, all the basic necessities of stand up is not there. <laughs> Well, I mean, he's standing up. That's yeah, already that's what it's I called. So, yeah, yeah. It's not called talking comedy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you, go, you have traveled around to different uh, locations. Have you had like any particularly tough audiences or really good ones? I mean, I, I don't know all, all the countries you've been to, but it sounds like you know you've been to Europe and the Balkans and. Yeah, yeah, Europe and the Balkans. And the Balkans. How dare you? <laughs> it's different. Uh, you know, you ask the Best you know you ask Europeans and they'll say it's different, and you ask people in Bosnia and they'll be like, yeah, it is different. <laughs> I've I've been to Europe and Georgia. <laughs> that's because okay. yeah. I I that's you know a little bit, but the rest, yeah, most countries in Europe, uh, the best audience. I don't know, like. We had a really, really great, we did a show in Stockholm as a part of one tour. Uh, and it was really great because uh, it was, I don't know, like something like 160 people or whatever. Uh, but there were some Scottish people, but mostly it was like people from all around the place. Like, I don't know, from Albania to Portugal to Brazil to Australia, Japan, whatever. And then really, really, there was this kind of synergy in the room that you could feel the end like we're all kind of here for the same like it doesn't matter yeah. you know yeah. where we're from what language do we speak whatever whatever it was really kind of great to see that impact that you can do a joke and no matter who the person is they will laugh at that yeah but uh, the bad ones it's you know you tend to forget them right you remember the best one easily no the vice versa because the good ones like you kind of feel oh i had a good show and that's it. Like, you know, that's the audience's job is to laugh and they laughed and that was it. But with the bad ones, you remember them because that means something went wrong, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm not actually night. a comic. I'm just a guy. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You get in your sleep. It's like nightmares, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh... So the, the bad ones, I remember it wasn't even particularly bad. It was kind of weird. Uh, we had an open mic on like Tuesday evening. So at like 7 p.m. So it was usually, I don't know, like 20, 25 people, not a lot. Uh, it was like a small, weird basement kind of thing. Uh, and we had one where there were maybe like six or seven people. So the host was kind of talking to each person individually, getting to know them and so on. And at one point, like three, I think, kind of big, bold, old Russian men walk in, like leather jackets, okay. bold heads. Like they walk in uh, with their own drinks, <laughs> that's why not. That's how you come to a bar. Yeah. Uh, I think they had like some like uh, bottle, like you could see through it, like see through bottle of probably vodka just or whatever. Like, uh, you, do you mean just like a plastic bottle yes, that they yes. had emptied out and yes. then filled with an alcoholic liquid? Of Most it? likely. I haven't. Oh, yeah. It could, it could just oh, be water yeah. because. No, he said it, was it was not. Vodka. It was no, yeah. It's not like, no. Yeah, it could just be water. Like this could be vodka as well. Yeah, yeah. There's no way that bottle was filled with water. It was a water bottle. It was originally a water bottle, but it was yeah. not. I, I don't think they were anymore. hydrating. I think yeah, they yeah, were yeah. trying to <laughs> do something else. This came from <laughs> these are the guys. Yeah. These are the guys that even the Gopniks are like, "Fuck, man, yeah. come on." They didn't hydrate for yeah, years, exactly. maybe. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they walk in, <laughs> they sit, uh, and you know, like they sit down, they have their drinks, they're listening to the show. Every time there is a joke, every time there is a punchline, they're laughing like ha 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 louder and louder. <laughs> they're having beers. They ordered some beers. They have the first one, the second one. They're getting like tipsier and tipsier and louder and are laughing. I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes later, like 
one turns to, and I was sitting behind them because I was like timing the comics and showing the, the light and everything. At, at one point, like one turns to the other and goes in Russian, like, wait, is this English? <laughs> the other one goes like, yes, it is. And this one goes, oh shit. And they stand up and fuck off. Like they were sitting there for 30 minutes, not knowing what the fuck is going on. Just listening to some foreign language, laughing when people are laughing. And then at one point they go like, is this English? Yeah, it is. Okay, oh, off that, we go. That doesn't sound so bad. That sounds great. These people, yeah, yeah. They, they played along, they got tickets and then they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't I, actually understand this language. I was just drunk <laughs> enough to get with it. You know? I thought that we're going to luck the rooms and beat you up and some other weird shit. Oh, they could have done that's that. Different, sure. That's a different example. <laughs> that's a different story. But something like not not quite like that. But we had a show early days, like maybe first two, three months of English open mics. And the host is just like picking on the people in the front. Uh, and there is again, like a big guy kind of leather jacket and so on sitting there like all serious and stuff and just like not laughing at all. And this guy tries talking to him in English. He's like, sir, like this is an English open mic, you know, blah, blah, blah. the guy's like, no, 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 Like, and the guy <laughs> asks him in Russian, because the host was Russian, like, do you know that there is a show going on, this is an English open mic and stuff? And the guy was like, tell joke, <laughs> tell joke. <laughs> and the guy was like, uh, I don't do kind of requests. <laughs> like I do my, my material. And the guy, but the guy was like quite drunk. So like he opens his wallet and he goes like, I give you money, you tell joke. And he takes like 5,000 rubles which back then before ruble like crashed and everything was pretty good money, like uh, more than a hundred euros. Wow. Right. Oh, uh, right. And, uh, and this guy goes like in English, he switches to English and goes like, okay guys, I'll tell some stupid shit. You laugh at the end of it. We'll, we'll tell him it was a joke. And he'll pay me. And he was oh. like, hey, guys. That da, man da, da, was da, never da. seen again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. So the guy does the joke. People laugh, obviously, because he told them to. And he tells the guy in Russian, like, you see, I did the joke. They all laughed. Pay up. And the guy, like, okay. And he pays him. And then the host asks, what do you do, sir, by the way? Like, if you're carrying around such cash. And he had, like, a wallet full of cash. And the guy goes, uh, yeah, I'm the what do you call it, like the, the chief uh, of the police department of this kind oh, of... Uh, oh, and, and I'm here on inspection because they're like running this kind of back room of the bar, like illegally or something like this. And oh, he was like, I'm here on inspection. And the guy is like, oh shit, <laughs> I just made fun <laughs> of this guy and took his money. Uh, and it turns out, but apparently he came there on inspection and got drunk or something and forgot about that. <laughs> so it was all fine. Like after yeah, the show, yeah. he came That's to the nice guy. Story. Russian. Yeah. You wouldn't get that in Turkey. What we had, like we had an incident where maybe you remember, you might not remember, there was like a show in Kadiko and a guy came to the show. Uh, uh, one of our friends was on stage doing jokes about like, I think, uh, God. Killing people or something like that, or God or something. Yeah, yeah. God killing people. That makes more sense. <laughs> Standard. And the guy, I think he, he got really p pissed off. Uh, and all he did was he was sitting in the front row. He had this jacket. He just pushed his jacket to the side and there was a gun. Jeez. Oh, the wow. He said, if you make these jokes, sucks. this is what's going to come. <laughs> and he was not drunk. Maybe if he was drunk, he would pay. That's more that. scary. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah, that was scary. scary. Like, yeah. oh fuck, uh, yeah, we don't he, know what's gonna happen. He wasn't a police. He wasn't drunk. Nothing. He just got pissed off at a joke and he just showed a gun. So Igor, when you come back here on your next <laughs> tour, <laughs> when I come, I'm well, never happened, coming. This back. happened like this happened be, like ten years, no, seven years ago. So. Seven years ago. Yeah, there are probably more guns in this country since then. Um, yeah. So you you think about it. <laughs> Statistically, wow. you know. Yeah. Well, that chills, man. That no, it's great. Nobody chills. got shot that day. No, 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 no. No one got shot. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you just had a, there was just a guy with a gun. That's there was just story. a guy with a gun. So, you know, you yeah. got you to gotta really hit your timing. Uh, and uh, hopefully it was, like, empty. Like, it didn't have any bullets in it. Well, that's such bullshit. You know, if you're going to... Carry a, gun. carry a gun make well, sure it's, make sure it's loaded that's you can the... deter people with just showing yeah, it. i know but it's like come on man if you're gonna go go <laughs> that's the that's the podcast uh, promise that if any of us start <laughs> carrying a gun it will be loaded uh well, so igor but yeah <laughs> to, to tag on what igor said i had yeah. a similar experience what you just told uh recently actually maybe a couple weeks ago i did a show on maybe others, other neighborhoods of Istanbul, Atashir. I don't know what to call that. It's not so far. It's like it's not exactly yeah. a suburb. Yeah, it's, it's like it's not a, city center either. It's like out out high in, middle income yeah. families living there, like high residential built like in the last fifteen years, like it's a project town. Anyways, 
I was I did a lot of uh, illegal jokes like jokes about smoking weed, jokes about maybe doing some other stuff illegally. Then I started doing some crowd work. I was emceeing the show and I was trying to meet this guy and he said we shouldn't meet. I said, why? Because I'm the chief inspector officer of Istanbul. <laughs> yeah, that rules. Dude, when you're like, here's all the drugs I do. My name is Murad, and you can follow me on Instagram, on all of my socials. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that rules. What, what brought you here? Like, I'm not talking about the war or anything. Okay. <laughs> why Turkey, like, out of all places? Uh, just a kind of holiday or whatever. And you knew that there was like stand-up comedy going on here? It was just like a holiday and just you found out uh, later on? Both. A bit of both because uh, last, I think every month since I moved back home, I've traveled somewhere. Yeah. Some for work, some not. So every time I travel somewhere, I also try to do a show as well to, you know, like why not? Mm -hmm. uh, especially if there is some established like English comedy yeah. scene and some organizers, producers, whatever. So I was looking for a place to actually go to that south Because my last like five trips, I think I've been to Lithuania, I've been to Denmark, I've been to Scotland, I've been to Finland, I've been to Berlin, all in the north and always like cold and, and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'll go south and I'll like get some yeah. warmth a bit, like change my environment for a while. Uh, so I was looking kind of maybe Greece, yeah. maybe uh, Turkey, maybe, but like Greece has no English comedy, obviously. Uh, so yeah, and then a friend of mine that uh, actually I co-host our podcast with, uh, David Munoz from Australia, he was yeah. here in Istanbul, I think maybe in July or August. Yeah. And he did some shows as well. Uh, you told about him, David, David yeah, Munoz. David, David Munoz yeah. And he came to our open mics? Probably so. Maybe yeah. I wasn't here yeah, for he did, another yeah. show. David, if you're listening to the podcast, write in and <laughs> remind us. Yeah, yeah what's yeah. the and name G'day, of... Mate. Yeah. What's Eagle, the name? How, how much of the depopulation of Croatia is just you going in and leaving every month? <laughs> well, we have a rule. Like, you, you can't leave until some someone comes back. <laughs> Are you yeah. serious? Oh, like, uh, yeah, you've, no. you've, got, you've got like... A, I was like... Oh, yeah, you've got that like That could a be program. the case, though. That's like... That's like, a, uh, that's like... You could make that a policy. Yeah, you've yeah. got like a hall yeah. pass in school... Yeah. Only one person using the bathroom at a time, like a bathroom key. You have to hand it off, and yeah, because yeah. like, if a guy exactly. dies, you're minus exactly. one. Then you have to get someone out. Get somebody yeah, in from that's, Bosnia. That's, that's a very yeah. Bosnia. <laughs> exactly right. They just listen to Igor's podcast to depopulate the country. <laughs> right, exactly. It's uh, <laughs> but on, the, on this chance, just tell us what's the name of your podcast, so our ten yeah, listeners, our ten can listeners can, can become our ten yeah, listeners. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're, trading, this we're trading this one chip in a casino. <laughs> <laughs> we want his listeners. Or yeah, we want exactly. Our listeners to I'll, mingle. It's, exactly. I'll, I'll, because we actually talked like the, the last episode that we've recorded, but we haven't published yet, was about the shows that we've done in the last like three months or something in different countries, like comparing them and stuff. Uh, and then David was talking about his shows here. Uh, oh, so nice. I will like give you di give this podcast a shout out, and yeah. now I'll plug mine as well. It's called it's <laughs> so, called the Comedy Kiosk. So comedy let's kiosk. Comedy let's, kiosk. Well, ours is the Comedy Passport. Right. Yours stays still. Our, ours moves around. Yeah, ours yeah. Is always like an English Turks word, but yeah. kiosk is like a Turkish word. Yeah, it's yeah. you know that it's an it is oh originally it's oh originally yeah, you did, you did, word. yeah wow. really yeah, we have words original words the original word kiosk is then like it changes to kiosk over time his podcast. More Turkish than ours. So yes. Just, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you, ten listeners that are listening to this switch to ours. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. more Turkish. That's the original. But, but don't undermine exactly. our ten listeners. Our ten listeners all has mental illness with thousand split personalities. So it makes ten thousand listeners That's when right. you think about it. That's right. That makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. So Igor, um, <laughs> we ta you talked about like having an international set. You know, a set that you can take out of the country and work anywhere basically, and it'll work. Pretty well. So how do you like come up with your ideas? What's your process kind of like? Um, well, it's it's uh, basically, and it's something that people don't believe me because every time I perform after the show, not every time, but like very often they come to me and they're like, wow, like how come that happened to you? Or like, wow, what's the end of that story? And I'm like, none of that ever happened. It's all made up, right? But they don't believe me. So wh what happens is like, I'm kind of thinking of scenarios that would be funny if they ended differently or if there was a different like i don't know context or if it, if it was in a different setting or something like this so when it 
Like e either it's something that happened to me or it's something I talked about with a friend or whatever. So I take this premise, like whatever it is, right? And then I try to write it in such a way that it sounds believable. So it's not like, you know, kind of something that would never, oh, and then a dragon came and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right, but right, but it's still like funny, right? So I can turn it into funny. So it's either experiences like with traveling, with living abroad, with something like this, dating, whatever, or it's stuff that, you know, just happens or comes up in a conversation. And I'm like, okay, that's an interesting idea. What if that idea was funny? So I just <laughs> right, write, right. You're embellishing your that. own life to make it funnier. Is that it? You start with something that actually happened and you're like, how can I make this funny? It doesn't even have to happen. Like okay. I can be on a tram or like I was on a ferry what, coming, so coming you're like, here. Are you just constantly dissociating from your own life and being like, what's something more interesting that could happen to me? While if you I'm had here? my life, you, you would understand. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. This it's, is... it's an escape strategy. To exactly. <laughs> like I'm, I'm starting to think maybe you haven't actually traveled anywhere. You've just been in Croatia imagining. I have traveled <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I've lived 10 years in Russia. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's where I've escaped to in my mind is Russia, to Moscow. My mind palace. Yeah, the mind palace. Is the safe place, which is Lithuania. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that's, that's... My mind palace is the Kremlin. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's one, one room in the palace. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the bone is what really, like, I don't know, I'm sitting on a ferry, yeah. I see something something happen. Doesn't have to be funny, doesn't have to be anything. And then I'm like, hmm, but what if it was funny? What if it... Like did that, that that actually makes the jokes more international because uh, it's not something that you refer in the local thing, but it's just a made up story where you can just uh, you can even make that joke in maybe that kind of jokes in your own language and it will still be funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you can adapt it to anything. Yeah. You know, because if the joke is, you can make turn it into a sketch. Yeah. A movie, yeah. Like, like yeah. not a movie, like a small. TikTok. You yeah, travel TikTok around. You, you just have to change out the names. So you're like, hey, so yesterday I was in the Paris metro, and <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the thing with a lot of jokes that people used to. Because like, for example, Russian stand-up has yeah. this very formulative uh, kind of uh, what would you call it? Like, I don't know way of mm -hmm. kind of the people write and perform their yeah. jokes there is a is, mathematic to it so there were, yeah, yeah, there were these like, people a while ago who were called like uh, they, they would tell anecdote they would tell like anecdotes right and they would like stand there sometimes with a paper and just like read what they had actually written and like read pause read pause yeah, but, read, but pause. even proper like stand up stand up there's now stand up mm -hmm. on TV and stuff it's kind of one same mode that people apply to how they write a joke and even when you get to that level that you have like writers and producers and so on they will tell you to write it like that because that's what flies right so so if you go to like a Russian open mic or some people that came to us to perform in English, they would still use that same thing. But it was very much kind of uh, clap if you've ever been on the metro. <laughs> then people clap. And then like, well, I was on the metro yesterday and this is what happened. Uh, and it's okay. a lot of that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Where uh, I agree with my premise, then let me do my setup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is the kind of stuff that, yeah. you know, it's not going to then work. Like if I take a joke about Moscow Metro yeah. and I go to Berlin and they'll be like, yeah. well, I don't know what yeah. the hell are you talking about? I've never you, been to Moscow Metro. So using the audience as a prop, uh, yeah. disguising yeah. as the crowd work. It's funny where you make the people clap first. Who's been on the Moscow Metro? Everyone claps. What if no one clapped or three people didn't clap? So you wouldn't make a joke you about that? You still go on. You still, you still yeah. go on? Yeah. You, okay. you, well, I have. You know? Unlike you fuckers, I've been yeah. to Moscow Metro. <laughs> well, if, if you're a good good enough of a comic, then you can turn it into a joke. Yeah, of course. You know? like, but if you're not, then it's just like yeah. you've wasted our time by asking questions instead of telling us jokes. <laughs> you make people clap and yeah, you make a joke about that. We right. have a couple of comedians in Turkish comedy scene as well doing that like it's it looks like crowd work maybe they feel all right i did some crowd work today but you didn't do shit yeah. you yeah. didn't respond to people you just yeah. get them to agree with stuff it's, you would already yeah it was one way relationship yeah. Yeah. communication so what was your experience around europe and like even even here how many stages did you do in like how many in istanbul in istanbul yeah uh, i did two basically did two. i did like a, a show of my own like a, an hour and something. And then I did the open mic. Uh, and it's actually interesting too, like when you go to a new place, it's always, I, I like to do my own show because I have now like a yeah. bunch of material and I like to see how it goes with the local audience and stuff. But then going to like an open mic or some kind of showcase feature show as well to see the local comics, like what do other people joke about yeah. and how it all looks, how yeah. it's it organized. Helps you feel better about yourself. It's totally <laughs> <true>. <laughs> <laughs> where, 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 where would you put like, like how, how was your European experience in different cities like Berlin or 
Uh, well, it's it's you know it's interesting because or Croatia. Uh, I, I'm really enthusiastic about that. Yeah, in Croatia, Zagreb Comedy Club, we're coming. Yeah, what, what, like Croatian stand-up is now becoming quite popular. Like there's yeah. Croatian comics who kind of travel even to small cities, to villages and stuff, and sell out like big halls because it's becoming mm. something that people are interested in and actually seek to to watch. Yeah. But like English, even back in 2016 when we went first time uh, to Croatia, in English stand-up in Croatia exists like, I don't know, twice a year when someone really oh. organizes. There is no regular English stand-up in Croatia. This is something that I'm trying to change now since I've returned. Yeah. So I'm hoping from starting January that I'll run some regular English nights in Croatia. Oh, that's, that's But nice. now there is nothing. So I think first time when we were coming, 2016, they had uh, the, the club closed, sadly, since then. But they had like a big room that used to be a cinema. And they converted, like, took out all the chairs and stuff, put, like, little tables and converted it into, like, a comedy club. I think 160 seats or something. Wow. And we saw that in a day. Like, they put it on sale and it sold out in, like, a day or two. Because people were like, wow. we want to see some live English comedy. And it just wow. doesn't exist. It's Let's not go there. Yeah. yeah, where are you based in Croatia? Uh, I'm now based in my hometown, which is a small town where nothing happens. But end of the year or beginning of next year, depending on some like uh, stuff, I'm moving to the capital. So that's where I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's where I'll try to organize something on a more kind All of right. permanent basis. So whole Balkans were very interested, like in Belgrade, in Ljubljana, and so on. Really. Then in the other parts, like I remember when we went to Vienna, 2017, I think there was uh, first kind of regular English open mic in Vienna then. Now there is like five or there is a comedy club oh, also in English. Yeah, I met one of them, Tamas Vamos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he runs uh, the, the club, the program at one club. Yeah. There is this guy, Reggie, that started the first kind of open mic. Uh, and there, like Europe is now, you know, they're kind of trying to do the network So the comedian from, yeah. I don't know, Bratislava can go like uh, one weekend to Vienna, one weekend to Prague, yeah. one weekend to Budapest and so on. Yeah. Uh, Berlin, obviously like a hub. There is like, I don't know, yeah. four or five English shows in Berlin every day. There's like an underground railroad now of like Russian comics being funneled through different countries. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, yeah. if, you're, if, you're, if you want to see Russian comedy now, it's so accessible because so many uh, Russian comics yeah. escape. So Berlin, uh, Israel. Yeah, uh, Istanbul those are the obviously two. full of uh, Russians. Uh, Israel, Israel full of Russians. Yeah, we're new on the map. We're, yeah, we're not we're not that uh, old. It's like three years maybe. Now there used to be English comedies, yeah. na- comedy uh, nights now and then, like uh, every two months, yeah. every three months. If you count regular shows, one and a half years old only. Uh, we yeah. didn't have like weekly shows. Yeah. We had some weekly shows, but they were not uh, tracking a lot of uh, traction. Yeah. Uh, but now we are persistent. Like even if we have three performers, we just continue pushing for that. Yeah, and especially if we only have a handful of performers, yeah, keep getting them to do the same. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's it's going to work work eventually because there is like. 20 million people in the city, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. some we had the same kind of mathematics and stuff when we started running English comedy, and especially when we opened a club, like an actual comedy club that ran shows in English, Russian, and Spanish. And yeah. English was our main program, and like weekends, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday evening was English. So we were like, okay, not a lot of people here speak English. It's not a popular language. People don't really learn it and whatever. But there is like 18 million people. Mm. So statistically, yeah. if like, I don't they know, 0.3% yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. of them speak English, that's like 2,000 people on our shows every day. As, you know? uh, As somebody who started this probably 2017, 2018 here, and I used to go to the um, open mics organized at ILAC, right? Yeah, the place where yeah. we do it now. It's, yeah, been a yeah. hu- it's been a huge jump just in the past few years, yeah. I have to say. Like, it was not like this when I started out here. It was it was very, like, just a handful of performers, just comics mm. sitting in the room all the time, you know. And uh, now we're doing regular shows ar- all around the city. And, like, a few years ago, I would yeah. never have imagined that. Like, you know. It, it yeah, was like I think a couple of, like, sorry, uh, it was like oh. a couple of, uh, a bunch of people, like, Going to church every Sunday. Yeah. Like that's that, that's why <laughs> yeah. it was like really. It's it's just a random bunch of yeah, people as like, well. Yeah, people from Iran, Russia. Yeah, yeah. people who had like absolutely nothing better like, in their yeah. lives to do than be there. Yeah. It's like yeah. Alcoholics Anonymous, yeah. but for people yeah. who wants to quit comedy, it's, right. I'm suffering more than I'm having fun. But now, <laughs> like we do podcasts. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Look where we came. We have a podcast studio. We have eight or ten listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Like the good old days. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Next VR up, Joe Rogan. Now. I've got the sniper rifle. <laughs> This is the new church. Yeah. No, but exactly. yeah, uh, it, used, it used to 
to be like it's still like that sometimes. Yeah, no, it's it does. Still it like, is. It's still like we got less people, but now it's more consistent. We got like yeah, it's yeah. consistent. That's it. Yeah. Sunday it's open mics are more. Three performers yeah. might come. Three audience members might be there, but we still do it because we know if we do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. We, we like yeah. going there. We might we might get up. down on like one like yeah. the open mic that you went to, Igor. That was like not heavily populated. I think there were like four or five audience members. You know. Yeah. yeah. But. It was uh, newish. It like. happens. That happened in that location too. That happens a lot. But like, uh, if you think about it overall, the trajectory is definitely on the way up here. It's very interesting. So I guess there's there's gonna be like all these places where comedians now in Europe. Most cities are pretty close to each other, actually. I don't know why there's not none yeah. in Greece though, but in the Balkans, in Europe, uh, there's like in Paris. Spain, the, there's lots of uh, there's there's a big com comedy scene now in generally yeah. in Europe. I think Barcelona. in the root of it, I was saying in the in the root of it, uh, you have to have some open mics. Y you can't really start with lineup shows directly. You have to have some open mics and uh, see who got who who has the talent. <laughs> you have to like the difference is why in some places I think English scene is very prominent and very vibrant, and in some it's just nothing. Yeah. I think that the first kind of starting point is where do people go? Like, where do people travel? Exactly. Because, or where do people move to live? Because, I mean, in Vienna, in Prague, in, in Barcelona, a lot of foreigners, not yeah. just tourists, but like a lot of people come there to live, yeah. to stay, whatever. And, you know, in Bulgaria, no. <laughs> so that's <laughs> the, the second question is where do people speak English? There is yeah. no regular English comedy in Italy at all. Like yeah. it, there is some, I don't know, in, in Milan, there is like once every three months or something because people don't, local people don't really speak or care for English. Yeah. That's the, in, in France, there is only like in Paris, but Paris is like a yeah. multinational, huge the, metropolitan city. The good news about re constantly receiving international refugees into this city <laughs> from whatever conflict. Istanbul's big in foreign, so, like, you know, people, lots of... Yeah, uh, people will speak English here because they have the to. World. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll watch out for Igor and uh, your next move to uh, have this comedy club ready in Zagreb. So all the ten listeners <laughs> yeah, exactly. know where to go. If I don't know where you, I don't perform. know who you are. I don't know where you are. <laughs> well, I don't get care. your ass over to Zagreb, Croatia. Uh, I don't care about the listeners, but we could go. One, we could like, go. Yeah, yeah, Once you open that. it, we'll just come. What's, yeah. what's, 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 what's the deal? Definitely, I'm having doing a mental check. It's no. great to know you, man. Yeah, it's great to her, be in yeah. contact with Use you. Use you as a ladder to my success. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yeah, it would be great. I mean, like, I'm hoping that once I start some like regular nights, it's going to be something like eventually of course yeah. not from the start like like let's say one open mic and one kind of feature show yeah. a week and then maybe once a month to have some kind of experience comics from abroad to come and perform yeah. because it's so different and we did that in moscow like we used to do every month we would have like a special guest yeah. that comes from abroad uh, and perform because people like it's just different comedy which people don't have access to regularly yeah, yeah. so yeah it would be great i mean it's not even that far why it's don't like, you do it in like like croatian the language uh, uh, I'll, why, I'll, do you, why are you doing it in english only i'll try because i i didn't do it in croatian for the last 10 years because i wasn't in croatia oh but okay. uh I'll, i think i'll try it again just because you know again there is like almost uh an open mic almost every day in croatian wow so wh when i'm not doing english i can at least can do, do it croatian in, in, in just language. like for stage time wow. and stuff every but day i think it's better than it i Turkey. should learn croatian yeah no. maybe not <laughs> maybe, maybe i exaggerated I but like we can serbian no <laughs> you do what you don't want like i'm half bosnian i haven't brought that up so yeah you know yeah I had, well, I had more questions, but I think that was a good conversation overall. And it's good that you're getting the word out about this, Zagreb. We can, we can keep cool. talking. <laughs> yeah, we can keep talking. Yeah. It won't be recorded or listened to. Yeah. Like the real thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, Let's like, have you know how people in real life sometimes just talk? Yeah. <laughs> so. But anyway, we're not getting this sound mixed. I have a couple of questions I want to ask to you. Sure. Uh, first, I, I asked this on stage the last time you attended the open mic, by the way. Last time Igor attended to, to Zuber open mic, we made him pay. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the money he made from his solo show. Yeah. Like went back into, in back yeah. into performing. Yes. Was gone yeah. to Leon's hosting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the, the 
So you've, yeah. you've earned off of me, kind of, you know. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, you owe him. Yeah, now yeah. I have to, I, next <laughs> yeah. time I have to go perform at Igor's Comedy Club and, it's, <laughs> and not get paid for it. It's a gun in my head. You gotta pay for it. That's yeah. the. Yeah. And then when you are even, Steven. Yeah. So the question was uh, I learned from internet that you are the thing that you spend the time most with, like five things. You you learn so, off the internet from uh, yeah, yeah I don't know if so it's you know true, that thing people say that like you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with no yeah but no, you never heard that before no no, no. Yeah, I've heard it yeah you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. like show me the five people you spend the most time with but yeah I changed it are. in my mind well, because from sometimes people some people don't things. have five friends like us and uh, you know <laughs> we are so curious the, if you have five the question becomes like what are the five things you spend the most time with yeah that, you, you know. and it tells you a lot like you are the average of those five things mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't expect we were going into deep psychology <laughs> on this podcast. But uh, what are the five things I spend most my most of my time on? Yeah, first uh, to last, hanging out with people. Like I'm a I'm an That's... introvert, but I'm like a social introvert. Like I need to spend right. time with people, and then I need like five days to recover from them. Mm. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's how it works. Uh, I travel when I can because I think like if okay. you don't see the the world and you're wasting your time in like your small little shitty place where you're from. Uh, don't take it personal, Leon. Yeah, well, don't take it personal. I was, uh, I'm the one with the American passport. You don't need to tell me. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm what? projecting I am taking it personal. <laughs> <laughs> Then comedy, obviously. Uh, music, big wow. part of, of music. my life. Yeah, wow. I mean, I, I, I think I can't like whatever I'm doing, I'm always with headphones, like Same. just commuting or working or whatever I'm doing. I'm like, wow, surrounded by music. And then what else? Um, anal. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, folks, subscribe to the Patreon and <laughs> to see Igor Monday. As see Igor Monday, give you a no, 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 There's one, thing you, there's one thing he you take from this podcast. some creation in it. You take in one him. thing from this podcast. It's that Igor does anal and he's not gay. Mom, I hope you're... Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the episode your mom Yeah, my mom listens, listens in. Yeah. Uh, uh, second question I have is that if you made one of your jokes into the most valuable creation note, like... Uh, So it's, it's worth like three dollars. Uh, is it? Joking. Okay, no, three dollars. If I could sell one of my jokes for three dollars, that's the. You are not selling it. You are if writing it was printed, on the if note. It was printed on the oh, okay. highest on the bill. Yeah, highest bill. Which joke you would choose? Uh, this is probably the the some like shitty one. So people have to deal with that every day when they're using money. <laughs> yeah, when people roll up the bill to do coke with. It's your joke that's going in their nostrils. <laughs> yeah, it's it's me that's poisoning their mind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What would be the joke? Um, I don't know. There is like, because uh, this one, the 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 one that I mentioned, like when I had to ask people, do they know this idiom? Do they know this phrase? It's actually one of my favorite jokes because I can't tell it that often because people have to know the the word, uh, the phrase. But maybe that one. So the joke is. Um, Like uh, Polish the third was the phrase. That's the yeah, punchline. Yeah, that's, that's the phrase. That's do, the do you, <laughs> the, let me. Let me. This Polish, not a, Polish, it's not a, by the way, doesn't mean Polish. Yeah, I know that was the joke. But so, um, do, do you know the phrase? I don't you know what know. it means. Yeah. I, I know. So it means not something actually. awful. So a turd is just shit, right? So yeah, you're saying like yeah. you can't polish a turd. You can't take something awful and make it better. Okay. Right. No, right. So not. that's so that's when you know that, right? Yes. And then the joke goes. Hit me with the joke, Igor. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the joke goes like, uh, my my dad, because it's a part of a set about like family, and I go like, my dad likes to give unsolicited advice, like even when you don't ask him for anything, he just like tells you what to do, uh, like. He he keeps telling my sister, you can't polish a third, you can't polish a third. And I'm like, Dad, let her do her makeup. 
<laughs> so that's, that's good maybe something like that but that's again it has to be with right. people who know the phrase <laughs> right but even if you don't know the phrase you can still you can get it from the context yeah. but then yeah. if your mind go like if you if you know how idioms work that they don't mean what they mean then you can get it oh. but if you're like a, a a2 level russian who doesn't really speak english then you don't know that idioms mean stuff that they don't yeah. mean and you're like uh, what polish uh, it sounds poop? like how you polish poop? why would it's you polish Polish. Why would you polish face? Cosmetic is not for polishing. <laughs> yeah, so it's, people get lost. Yeah. So Igor, what do you think? Uh, what's your biggest daily expense? No, I'm not, I, I want him to ask. Right. Me. <laughs> so, so, <what> you... <laughs> so Igor, <laughs> what is your biggest daily expense? Uh, anal. Uh, <laughs> what is my biggest daily expense? You mean like from the treatments you have to take for the? <laughs> from the QR codes the I QR have to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's my biggest daily expense? Uh, the food. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big I'm a big eater. Yeah, I'm one of those guys who has to eat to survive. I don't know if you're yeah. like that, but me, I feel like that. I have to <laughs> eat I, regularly. I eat like every day. Yeah, sometimes three times wow. or something, and it's wow. lost money sadly. Yeah. So wow, the Bosnians they weren't doing that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if if I if I have to spend money on something that's not like rent and food and stuff, then it's probably. Uh, traveling or something like comedy related like as I said yeah. the podcast so we bought the equipment this kind of stuff like yeah, constantly pay for the open mics in Istanbul yeah, yeah. my biggest, <laughs> biggest daily expense open mic <laughs> paying you guys to perform that's right and we appreciate it we thank you um, <laughs> what was the last meal you had last meal said? I had I had some really okay chicken and pasta in a restaurant across the street mm. really okay not good but also not bad so i'm i'm happy with that It's the most fine chicken and pasta you could have ever asked for i mean to be to be fair uh, i went to copenhagen in like september or something and i people recommended a kebab place of of all food like classic <laughs> danish food right mm -hmm. uh, and it was like a nice fancy restaurant and and i like got food poisoning and i couldn't leave the toilet for the next five days oh so if the God. chicken is fine that's good like for traveling that's good <laughs> enough <laughs> yeah so the, it, this restaurant whatever it's called it did not poison you and that's worth at least four stars no he'll he'll find out six hours later if he's not poisoned yeah, you yeah. can't say definitively that you yeah, haven't yeah, been poisoned yeah. then then Still the review comes in yeah. You know, latent yeah poisoning in turkish food yeah so it comes after a while well yeah. he's been to russia I'm sure, he's familiar, i'm sure he's familiar with latent poisoning uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm out of questions, but Igor, thank you for coming to this podcast once again. It was thanks, nice thanks to have met you. Thank, thanks for having me. All right, let's go. So, all right, this, this was another episode of the Comedy Passport Podcast. I'm here with Murat Gencholdo, Igor Monday, and Enes. What's your Uysel? Uysel? And Enes Uysel. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for listening, whoever you are, wherever you are. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Hello, can I see your passports, please?